Welcome to this new add-on spotlight. In this add-on spotlight we're going to look at the Salty 747 version 040 which has been released yesterday and also fixes some compatibility issues uh, with sim update number 5. So let's have a closer look at uh, I would say the custom dashboard right or the custom cockpit because it has been a fully optimized uh, cockpit compared to the default cockpit which Asobo delivers. Uh, one of the things I found out is that there's now, I'd say, kind of a cover for some of the buttons uh, which are preventing you from switching off uh, certain buttons like the battery, etc. Um, other than that, uh, I think nothing has changed a lot uh, in this version. Uh, the most changes were happening on uh, this part of the aircraft, which is the MCDU or the FMC. Uh, I think it's the, the MCDU is only for the uh, 320. Uh, so this is the display as you can see and there's also a specific menu for the uh, salty options and the salty options are really specific for the salty uh, mod which includes of course also the SimBrief integration. So if you didn't set it up you need to enter the SimBrief ID which you can find on your SimBrief uh, profile when uh, scheduling or when planning a flight and then you need to enter it here it doesn't support i would say a method of uh, providing your username uh, in addition to that we've got the uh, multiple options of the uh, meter source right which is used for the weather it's uh, the av uh, wx the fat save the pilot edge the avao and the Me meteor blue meteor blue is the one which is by default used by a flight simulator uh, the TAF which is set to uh, NOAA by default, but you can also switch it to IVAO. Then you've got the units, but there's not much to configure there. And you've got the ATIS source. And in this case, you still have the options like VETSIM, Pilot Edge, IVAO, and the FAA uh, US only, right? So th that's good. Uh, I'm not sure why it's mentioned specifically here, US only, um, because that would also mean that it wouldn't work in uh, when you're flying in EMEA or in the rest of the world um, but yeah that, that's fine for now uh, other than that we've got the mask option and you can switch on the pilot visibility right so in this case it will show both pilots you can set to none of the pilots only the I would say pilots only the co-pilot or both uh, being displayed um, Besides that, there are a lot of changes in the FMC. Uh, so let's go to the FMC. Uh, the FMC has been adjusted. Uh, there's now functionality being added to uh, schedule a direct to, right? To a specific uh, waypoint or uh, airport. You've got the holding functionality and you now have the ability to, I would say, make changes in your current flight. Uh, in addition to that, the custom waypoints such as precise coordinates and waypoints based on distance are now possible, which is kind of cool. So you can now add, I would say, waypoints based, based on their distance, but also uh, use precise coordinates uh, in your flight plan. Um, so let's uh, do some, some stuff and then look at some of the options here. So we're going to do the uh, position in it. Uh, to make sure that we're correct. So uh, we go to the next page. Make sure that everything looks okay. That all looks fine. Well, then we can again go back to page one. And on page one you can uh, define the flight, right? So uh, you can either uh, pull it directly from um, SimBrief if you configure the integration of course and the other option is to set a flight manually right so i can uh, push in the uh, uh, originating our airport and then the destination uh, what shall we do as destination uh, yeah kind of a weird flight a really short one for a 747 uh, to rotterdam airport uh, <laughs> then we're gonna send request and then we're gonna load it. Uh, another option you saw, you saw is that um, you also have the option to send a request and then uh, load the functionality. Let me. See. Then it will load the functionality from uh, SimBrief, right? So this was the last flight I configured in SimBrief. So you can either configure everything manually 
or you can press the send request option to get the data from SimBrief. If you want to get rid of everything, you can uh, erase everything and then uh, configure it manually again. But let me uh, send a request and then say, uh, you can either say purge, not sure what the option does, uh, or you can say load. In this case, load, it loads the uh, flight plan with all the information required, right? Uh, if you are not happy with it, then you can delete it by pressing the erase button or you can activate it uh, that will activate the flight plan. But in our case, we don't want to uh, activate it. So we're going to push the uh, destination again in or and the origin. Uh, perf in it. Uh, perf in it, you can see the cost index, uh, which you can get from the flight plan, the uh, flight. Uh, or the cruise altitude, which set to a uh, flight level 20. Uh, the reserves, uh, you can press the uh, request again. And then you see, hey, it's rejected. Or you can reject the initial findings or you can accept them. So this is pulled automatically. If you don't like the values, you can simply say, okay, I want to reject it. Then we'll go back to the default values, as you can see. If you want to pull them again, you can say, uh, send request and then uh, accept them, which is okay, kind of okay. Uh, in a trust limiter, not a lot of options uh, compared to what it was previously, right? Uh, takeoff, uh, speeds or percentages, and also uh, the climb levels. Uh, so take that into account. Uh, takeoff, you can define the flaps here by pushing the buttons. Uh, so 15 degrees, for example. Um, based on that, you would normally also expect that you can load the flight plans, but probably we missed some data. So that's what I figured out is that if these buttons are not working correctly, so you can you can push it in, but I'm not sure if it works. Yeah, it also works. But some of the uh, add-ons have the ability to automatically calculate the V1, the VR, and the V2 speed for you. Uh, if not, you need to push them in manually like we just did. So let's let's do that. Not sure if these are the correct numbers, right? I'm just pushing in some of the numbers. Uh, runway, you can define it uh, once you're, um, I would say, got the permission to take off and you know the runway. Uh, reference speeds, right? You can show them or hide them uh, in the uh, in the other displays, which we'll have a look at uh, in a few minutes. Uh, trust limiter, then we're back again to the original page, right? So we defined everything so we can go back to the index. And in the index, you will find several options. You find the uh, nav data, which shows you uh, the long and latitudes, uh, the elevation, the channel, uh, the position, which we already looked at, right? So we don't need to do it again. Uh, here's the perf pages, which is automatically accessed when uh, I would say specify, when specifying the position and going to the pages, you will automatically be taken to all these steps, which is, I would say, cool. The approach step, of course, not because that's not what we're going to do. Uh, the identification page, you can use that to uh, set the uh, correct uh, engine types, although I don't think you can set here a lot, to be honest. Uh, FMCCOM, uh, pre-flight. You can define some some of the the items, right? Uh, Acres pre-flight options, and then you can uh, say receive the messages. And here you can see the messages being received, right? So that's uh, that's cool. Um, going back to the ATC index, oh, let me do that. FMC com. Then you've got the in-flight ones, report, position report, right? You can send a position report uh, to not let you, to ask for where you are located or send it um, just to let everybody know where you are. Uh, Post-flight, event types, uh, messages received. You can see also the messages received, but those are the old messages, right? You can also see some old messages here. You can completely erase the log if you want. Although I don't think that that option works uh, currently. Uh, weather, the ACARS request, right? You can ask for weather report, for example, for Amsterdam. Uh, and then you can also, uh, let me define them for, let me define this one also for Rotterdam Airport. 
uh, and then you can say meet a request, um, which is fine. There are no messages yet. Uh, keep in mind that the ACARs, uh, that the messages here are not always working correctly. Uh, so you need to take that into account. Um, whether return to the requests data link is ready so it should normally do it uh, no it doesn't like it uh, to ATS destination let me specify it again Uh, it looks like uh, I need to look into this a little bit closer to make sure how it really works, though, that ACAR functionality. Uh, it looks like that, that, that the link is up. Uh, requests are there. Oh, here you can see. Oh, here it was. <laughs> see <laughs> how easy it was. So we just requested uh, the weather for or uh, originating airport. Oh, you can do the same thing for the destination one. And then you can go to the messages received and that will show you information. In this case, it says, hey, there's no D8 is available. And that's what you see with, with most airports, to be honest, in Flight Simulator at least, that there's no digital aid is available, which is, I'd say, kind of a pity. Um, Going to the departure and the arrivals, uh, there were also some changes there, right? Um, it was completely redesigned, so let's assume that we're taking off from one way, uh, 18 left, and then uh, using uh, ND2E as the uh, SID, which is the instrumental departure, and then we're gonna select route, and then we can select, uh, let me also push in uh, the destination airport. Come on. And then say activate. Uh, next page, you can see that the uh, route or the SID has been added to the flight plan. Uh, so we're going to activate it again. Um, if we now would go to the uh, legs, you will see that the flight plan has been adjusted, right? We're taking off from here. And then it will follow to Andy and then back to Rotterdam. And you can see the flight levels uh, displayed after the waypoints or channels if needed. And keep in mind that if this uh, exec button um, is lighting up, you need to press it because then it needs to execute the changes. So be aware of that. Uh, Besides that, you've got the ATC menu, uh, ATC login, uh, log on status. Uh, not sure where this is used for. There's no uh, data link yet. So I think it has to do with some third party add on which you can use. Uh, you can see there's not, not much which we can do there. You've got, of course, the, the VNAV, right? So you can set the VNAV um, configuration like uh, the cruising altitude. Uh, the speed, the transition speed, so at uh, 10,000 feet, it's limited to 254. And after that, we can go much faster. Uh, max angle, right? The max angle of turning. Uh, engine out, uh, climb direct. There's no functionality behind those buttons yet. Uh, then if you're reaching the econ speed, economic speed, uh, then you're having uh, these options so the maximum n1 speed is 89 percent 89.6 percent right we don't want to blow up the engines uh, and econ destination speed is 240 uh at 10,000 feet so below 10,000 feet we're gonna decrease uh forecast uh i'll say these buttons are not yet working if i'm correct so that's uh, i would say a lot of adjustments are being made here in the FMC. Um, I must say I'm, I'm pretty impressed uh, by this, uh, which kind of functionality they added. Uh, in addition to that, they uh, modified some of the sounds being uh, displayed or um, being played in, when you fly. Uh, for example, the uh, overspeed and the sync rate. Um, 
the VNAV alt mode. Uh, VNAV will now stop climb, descent when reaching the MCP altitude. Uh, there's also a custom climb cruise and descent speeds can be set in the uh, VNAV FMC pages. That's this button, which we just discussed. Um, other than that, um, there are some PFD changes. Um, so there's some polishing being done. The Q and H can now be pre-selected on the PFD when in standard mode. Uh, new pitch limiters added TCAS uh, traffic. Uh, there was a heading bug which has been fixed. Um, and other than that, uh, we have there some some nice options like, for example, the fuel system has been adjusted. Uh, the fuel system has, is now fully functional, uh, a fuel jettison system. And it's also an ICAS message has been added related to the step tanks uh, operations. Um, as mentioned already, there are also some fixes for uh, flight simulator update number five. For example, the uh, speed brake or the auto brake option was not working initially, but it works now uh, perfectly. And it also shows you, okay, uh, the messages here, right? So you can, can see that. Um, here normally is the map, right? Because, but we probably need to adjust the engines a bit or need to start the engines. Uh, there's still some work to do, as you can see. For example, this button is not working yet, which worked previously. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, there's, that they're aware of it and that they're working on that uh, functionality to get it back to the, uh, uh, to the aircraft. And there are so many changes in sim update number five, as it looks like, because a lot of the... Uh, Let's say custom add-ons have broken completely uh, due to the changes uh, that were, were made. Um, can you do other things? Yes, you can still control this, uh, luckily using uh, this button, right? So that, that's good. You can still make the changes here. You can sh still uh, navigate to all the options. So that's cool. Uh, in addition to that, you see the buttons here on the bottom. Uh, and here's also the weather one, which we just discussed, which you can switch on. To, to see the weather and uh, the waypoints, right? So, and here you will see uh, text lighting up, uh, position, terrain, right? You can enable a lot of those options, which is kind of cool. Um, other than that, I don't think that there are a lot of other changes as far as I could discover, but I would say I'm really impressed with all the changes they already made, uh, which is really cool. Uh, here ends this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below the video. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.